Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to tune a carburetor. Anybody who's been following the channel knows that I just recently went from a old school Elbrock 1406 to this newer Elbrock AVS2. And uh, straight out of the box, I was already pretty much impressed. I could feel an improvement over the original Elbrock. Thing is, I didn't buy this carburetor straight from Elbrock. It was remanufactured. I bought it from a place called National Carburetors. It was a factory defect carb. I guess they buy a bundle of them from Elbrock and they rebuild them themselves and then they resell them. Uh, I just threw it on. I didn't check anything, went out, ran it. And it, you know, it had a little issue here and there. No big deal. But when I got home, I did try to set everything back to Elbrock specs and it was way off these right here are your mixture screws anybody running a stock engine this carburetor brand new will probably run straight out of the box 9 out of 10 times but if you're having issues rule of thumb is screw these mixture screws all the way in factory setting is two and a half out but if you're still having issues with running it two and a half out what you're gonna do is have it warmed up idling screw your mixture screw in until your engine starts to run rough or bog down back it up till it smooths out and leave it alone and you do that on each one and uh, another issue you might have is factory setting this is your accelerator pump Factory puts it in this middle hole. When you stab the throttle, it may backfire or cough. What you're gonna wanna do is adjust these holes. You're gonna wanna move. What I generally do is if you go down a hole, it leans it out. I usually start that way. And if you're still having an issue and it makes it worse, then go to the top hole, because it may need more fuel. And then in some instances, you have to actually bend this rod a little bit because there's not adjustment with these holes. But on a stock engine, 9 out of 10 times, one of these holes will work. And then on the AVS-2, I actually have this spring-loaded flap back here on your secondaries. Here's a little spring right here that spring-loads everything. Well, you got a set screw here, and this is your screw that, your, your spring tension screw. Clockwise loosens the tension, counterclockwise tightens the tension. Factory setting, you take that set screw off, you let that tension of that spring unwind. You're going to want to turn this counterclockwise until this flap shuts. When it just touches, then you're going to want to go a full turn and then set your set screw. That is factory setting. Now, when you got a modified engine, tuning one of these carburetors gets a little more complicated. When you're running cam, heads, intake, any modifications, because it changes everything. Cams change your vacuum, carburetors react and act different with different vacuums so where i'm at right now i've got a lt4 hot cam vortex heads it's on a 350 board 30 over with flat tops my compression's about 10.3 to 1 got this summit racing air gap style intake well the mixture screws I've got them set to one and a half out and it's still really rich. It kind of loads up with fuel. I'm going to try turning them down, but I may have to try another old school trick to get this to actually work. I've got the accelerator pump in the bottom hole just because it does load up with fuel and it's rich straight off the hit. So I tried to compensate by leaning out the accelerator pump. 
And then on my secondary flap, I've actually got it tightened to uh, two and a half turns to tighten it because I was getting a, when it would transition from the main jets to secondaries, I was getting a, a cough and a hesitation. And I pretty much worked that out by tightening that flap. These flaps make everything, to me, it makes everything a little more tunable. But right now with the cam, it changed my vacuum. And there's some other things you can do inside one of these flaps. You got metering rods and step-up springs. I'm going to take one of these off and let you see what they look like. But these work off basically vacuum. And uh, you can put different springs in here for different vacuum settings that you got. But when you fire it up, vacuum sucks these metering rods down into the jet. So it cuts the fuel off from going to that jet. And what happens is when you got no vacuum and a strong spring, step-up spring in here. Your uh, meteoring rods don't sit down in the jet. So your main jets are sitting there just pouring fuel in. So you've got, they got step-up springs. they got different ones for different vacuums. I haven't really gotten into this yet. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna have to get some step-up springs. Just because the cam has changed the vacuum. And you can also get different size metering rods to rejet. They got some that are thicker and thinner. And then they got lighter springs, shorter springs. They've got a kit that's already set. I've already been through all this on AVS on 351 Cleveland. And... I put the right spring in it for the vacuum the cam was making. But what I was having problems with is the idle circuit was still way rich. Even with these metering rods all the way down, the right step up springs in, it was still rich. It would load up with fuel, foul the plugs. It would always cough on takeoff because it was loaded up with fuel and an accelerator pump would put more fuel. So an old school trick is to drill holes in the throttle blades. And what that does is it lets air through them holes where it can idle up to where you can actually back your idle screw down to where it closes the transition slot, the idle slot on your butterflies to lean it out underneath the bottom side. Because as you idle this up, it richens it also. So the key is to try to... Most people will tell you to go ahead and try out these step-up springs. But as far as, you know, your idle circuits, as long as that main jet is clogged with these needle valves and it's sitting down in the seat because you got the right step-up springs, has nothing to do with your idle circuit. And on this idle circuit, the more you turn this to idle it up, the richer it'll get. Because it opens, the transition slot on the idle circuits gets bigger. So you just want to try to idle this down to lean it out. But as you do that, you're going to idle it down and cut all the air off. So that's where the old school trick of drilling your butterflies comes in. On the other AVS I had, we wound up with five 30 second hole in the front two throttle blades and three 30 second holes in the back two. If it comes to the point that you have to do that because of your cam, I recommend starting with smaller drill bits at first because it is just an experiment kind of deal. I generally start with a 3 32nd hole in each of the front ones 
which that's probably what I'm going to do with this one because the can's not so big that I need very much. So I'm just going to start with three 30 second holes in each one where I can idle this down and lean out that idle circuit. So when I first hit the throttle, it's not so rich that I get a cough or a backfire and it won't keep loading up to foul out the plugs. But that's generally how I tune these Elbrocks. On a Holly, they're a little different. They've got a little set screw you can kind of compensate with the, the secondary butterflies or throttle blades and then idle this, idle this idle screw down so your transition idle circuits are right. But Elbrock's not made like that. But basically it's just all an experimental thing. What I'm going to try to do first is maybe just screw in my uh, I can't even think what the hell they're called now. I'm going to screw in my mixture screws a little bit more. I may screw them all the way in and out half or out one so I don't have to drill the uh, throttle blades. And another thing I may try is I'm going to order some step up springs. I'm going to get a vacuum gauge, check the vacuum, and put the right step up springs that I need in here and see if that helps before I go any further to drilling throttle blades. Because drilling throttle blades, you want that to generally be your last resort. Because if you ever do change the cam, it's going to be different. And uh, we're running into that problem right now on a 351 Cleveland. We are starting to... Uh, we're gonna get rid of the cam. It's it's more of a, a, a thumper style cam. And uh, we're gonna get rid of it and go to a, a, a different style cam. And uh, now that we've got all the holes in the, the throttle blades, we're gonna have to uh, figure something else out because the vacuum is gonna, we're probably gonna have more vacuum now. So we're gonna have a hard time trying to idle it down with all the holes in the throttle blades. But that's generally just how you kind of get started, guys. Like I say, it's an experimental deal. You kind of got to understand how it works. And what your vacuum is and what you need. But I hope maybe this video helps some of you guys. I know there's still more to it. I probably didn't explain everything. But that's just a little bit of what I know of how to do the tuning on one of these AVS-2s.